was an email that was sent to me and I'll just say her first name to protect her identity. Uh, Denise, D-E-N-Y-S-E. -E. Maybe that's not protecting identity because that's not a common name, but anyway. Denise is her name and she sent an email and this email talked about something that's happening in Canada. The subject was leaked email from Liberal Party of Canada lays out the plan for what's going to happen in November, December, and then the first and second and third quarters of 2021. Now, this is not based upon what a person's opinion is or conjecture is. This is based upon what actually happened at a meeting in the legislative bodies on the liberal side in Canada. So here's what it comes down to. The roadmap and aim was set out by the PMO and is as follows. And I hate looking down when I'm, when I'm reading this, so let me see if I can read it this way. All right. Phase in secondary lockdown restrictions on a rolling basis, starting with major metropolitan areas first and expanding outward. Expected by November 2020. Next one, rush the acquisition off or con construction off isolation facilities across every province and territory expected by December 2020. These are concentration camps they're talking about. Daily new cases of COVID-19 will surge beyond capacity of testing. Interesting that they already know that they're going to surge, right? Why? Because they know that if, the more, every, if there is such a virus out there, assuming that there's a real virus out there, the testing is already going, it's already predetermined. They're testing, they're attenuating, they're basically amplifying the uh, RT-PCR test to the point that every human being will test positive. That's what their goal is. All right, so the new daily cases of COVID, daily new cases of COVID will surge beyond capacity of testing, including increases in COVID-related deaths following the same growth curves expected by end of November 2020. Complete and total secondary lockdown, much stricter than the first and second rolling phase restrictions expected by end of December 2020, early January 2021. Reform and expansion of the unemployment program to be transitioned into the universal basic income program except expected by quarter one 2021 projected COVID-19 mutation and or co-infection with secondary virus referred to as COVID-21 leading to a third wave with much higher mortality rate and higher rate of infection expected by February 2021. Daily new cases of COVID-21 hospitalizations and COVID-19 and COVID-21 related deaths will exceed medical facility capacities expected by quarter first uh, by Q1, Q2 of 221. Enhanced lockdown restrictions referred to as third lockdown will be implemented. Full travel restrictions will be imposed, including inter-province and inter-city expected by quarter two, 2021. Guys, understand that. That means that if you're, if you're in British Columbia, you can't go to... Um, uh, Quebec. All right. This is what they're talking about. And if you're in one city and you're trying to go into another city in the same province, they're not going to try to, they're not going to allow you to do that. This is in Canada. Of course, they're going to try to roll this out. And, and I'll get to that point here in a second. All right. Uh, transitioning of individuals into the universal basic income program expected mid quarter to 2021. Projected supply chain breakdowns in inventory storage, large economic instability, all expected late second quarter 2021. Deployment of military personnel into major metropolitan areas as well as all major roadways to establish travel checkpoints. Restrict travel and movement, provide logistical support to the area expected by third quarter 2021. Along with that provided roadmap, the Strategic Planning Committee was asked to design an effective way of transitioning Canadians to meet an unprecedented economic endeavor, one that would change the face of Canada and forever alter the lives of Canadians. All right, guys, this is where it gets really disturbing, as if it's not already disturbing. What we are told was that in order to offset what was essentially an economic collapse on an international scale, that the federal government was going to offer Canadians a total debt relief. So people are getting excited about that. That sounds good, but wait. This is how it works. The federal government will offer to eliminate all personal debts, all mortgages, all loans, all credit cards, etc., with all funding, which all funding will be provided to Canada by the IMF under what will become known as the World Debt Reset Program. 
In exchange for acceptance of this total debt forgiveness, the individual would forfeit ownership of any and all property and assets forever. In exchange for acceptance of this total debt forgiveness, the individual would forfeit ownership of any and all property and assets forever. The individual would also have to agree to partake in the COVID-19 and COVID-21 vaccination schedule which will provide the individual with unrestricted travel and unrestricted living even under a full lockdown. So if you agree, you can go do anything you're doing as long as you partake in the COVID-19 and COVID-21 vaccination schedule, regardless of the lockdown, magically you take this vaccine and boom, guess what? You don't have to social distance. You don't have to wear a mask anymore because you have already gotten your vaccines. All right. So this is unrestricted living under even under a full lockdown through the use of a photo identification referred to, uh, to as Canada's Health Pass. Committee members asked who would become the owner of the forfeited property and assets in that scenario and what would happen to, le to lenders or financial institutions. We were simply told the World Debt Reset Program will handle all of the details. So when that was, they were asked what happens to the property and what happens to uh, the banks, don't worry about it, we're going to take care of it. That's what they were told. All right, and now it gets really, really interesting. Wow. Committee members asked who would become, I'm sorry, excuse me, I read that. Several committee members also questioned what would happen to individuals if they refused to participate in the World Debt Reset Program or the Health Pass or the vaccination schedule. The answer we got was very troubling. Essentially, we were told it was our duty to make sure we come up with the plan, meaning the Liberal Party was told that it was their duty to come up with the plan to ensure that would never happen. We were told it was, the, it was in the individual's best interest to participate. When several committee members pushed relentlessly to get an answer, we were told that those who refused would first live under the lockdown restrictions indefinitely, and that over a short period of time, as more Canadians transitioned into the debt forgiveness program, the ones who refused to participate would be deemed a public safety risk and would be relocated into isolation facilities. Once in those facilities, they would be given two options, participate in the debt forgiveness program and be released or stay indefinitely in the isolation facility under the classification of a serious public health risk and have all your assets seized. As you can imagine, after hearing all of this, it turned into quite the heated discussion and escalated beyond anything I've ever witnessed before. In the end, it was implied by the PMO that the whole agenda will move forward no matter who agrees with it or not. That it won't just be Canada, but in fact, all nations will have similar roadmaps and agendas. That we need to take advantage of the situations before, before us to promote change on a grander scale for the betterment of everyone. The members who were opposed and ones who brought up key issues that would arise from such a thing were completely ignored. Our opinions and concerns were ignored. We were simply told to just do it. All I know is that I don't like it and I think it's going to place Canadians into a dark future.